Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the midweek service. And Lord, we just ask for once again your anointing, God, just to infiltrate the sanctuary, infiltrate our hearts most of all, God. And we just ask that you give us hearing ears and receptive hearts, Father God, just to receive the word, Father, which is able to build us up, encourage us in the in strengthen us, God, and bring us into our inheritance as well in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for every person here tonight, God, that you just touch their hearts and touch their lives in a special way. And we truly ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Greet somebody tonight if you haven't already done so. In the name of the Lord.
you, Lord. Hallelujah. When I think about the Lord, yes, yes, yes. How He saved me, He raised me, and how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, filled me to levels. When I think. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, if you would. Bless his name. I'm going to count to three, and let's sing hallelujah. Can we do that? Just say out hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah. One more time. One, two, three. Hallelujah. One more time. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now let's sing it. Makes, Makes me, me want to shout. shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. How many's ever had your, you know, like maybe in your devotions or whatever you've had, or you know, uh, just your quiet time before the Lord, and maybe in your prayer closet or, or just your meditation with the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord speaks something good into your heart, and you know what? You just don't sit there and just go, ah, yeah, okay, Lord. But man, I don't know about you, but man, when He speaks something into my heart, bless God, I know it comes right directly. From I say, praise God, hallelujah. Man, I feel that, Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. 
Can I tell you something? I feel this in my spirit tonight. Makes me want to shout hallelujah. Glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe all of us are going to be shouting hallelujah when we step into his presence. Listen, and we don't have this flesh. Listen, to lay, weigh us down. Praise God. It's going to be gone. Are you hearing me? Because we're going to be like him. And bless the Lord forevermore. I guarantee you there's going to be a whole lot of shouting we're in, when we're in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't believe there's even going to be a quiet Baptist. And somebody said, or a quiet Methodist, or a quiet Pentecostal. Bless God, you mean you have quiet Pentecostals? Yeah, you got quiet Pentecostals. Bless the Lord as well as Methodists, Catholics, Baptists, Presbyterians, what have you. But you're looking at an old boy. Hey, listen to me. That's a little bit emotional. When the Lord gets around on me, listen to me. I'm liable to shout. I'm liable to jump. I'm liable to spin. Hallelujah. You know what? And I don't do it for nobody but him and him alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We're not like trying to make a show, but praise God. Hallelujah. We want to make a, a show unto him in the name of Jesus. And that's the difference. And somebody said, Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, man, he's a good God. Would you do that? You can be seated if you'd like. Bless the Lord. A couple prayer requests we need to take to the Lord tonight in prayer. Uh, Jesse called me and said that Taylor and Reagan both running the 101 fever. So we're going to pray for them if we would, please. Uh, and just ask God just to touch Taylor and Reagan and that the fevers would go from them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Fred's got the flu. Joyce. Who else? Anybody else tonight? Okay. Amen. Brock, Megan. Megan's got the same thing that... Uh, <laughs> help me, Lord. Jamie had... Bed rest for it. <laughs> you can't get out of the bed till February. So let's just keep praying for Megan that uh, God do a miracle there, just as well as He did with Jamie, and that everything come through fine and dandy with her. In the name of the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Bless God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask you to stand your feet with me. I, I, you know, I, I just, you just sit down. I ask you to sit down, but I'm going to ask you to sit back, stand back up because, praise the Lord, the Lord's worthy of our honor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore. So let's just lift our hands. We, a, lot of, a lot of requests went up. Praise the Lord. And you know the requests. I know some of the requests. Bless the Lord. So let's, in a corporate body, just begin to lift them up before the Lord. Can we do that? Father, we just bring all these requests, Lord. In the throne room of grace tonight, in the name of Jesus. God, you know each and every one. Lord, many requests represented here tonight. And Father, we just ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to flow supernaturally, God. For every one of these, Lord, are special to the heart of those that presented them. And God, we don't want to just take things lightly, but Lord, God, we believe that you hear and you answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. And Father, we loose the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, to move and flow, God, to touch those that are sick and touch those that are afflicted in the name of the Lord. And that God, hallelujah, whatever the situation, that you come in the very form of that need, Lord. And that the body is subject to the word of the living God, that by his stripes we're healed. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Father as we truly give you the praise and glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Be glorified in every one of these bodies, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we truly thank you and we truly praise you and honor you for it in Jesus' name. To God be the glory forevermore and evermore and evermore. And everybody in the house said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking for good reports. Bless the Lord. Victor, you can be seated Victory reports to take place, hallelujah, are to come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of how God has healed, delivered, and set free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody have a testimony tonight that you want to give God some glory, maybe some something that he's done for you tonight or through the week. Bless the Lord. A couple of ushers, take up the tithes and offerings if you would this evening. 
so I can just dig it up. Uh, Go ahead. Not here, but uh, I want to testify for her that uh, after she was prayed for on Sunday morning that um, she has had very, very little pain, um, enough that she hasn't had to take any pain medicine. Amen. So we give God all the glory Praise in the whole God. situation. Yes. Hallelujah. She's been in a lot of pain, but um, awesome. she's, it's, it's released a lot, so I give him all glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Bless God. Hallelujah. Chris? Um, I want to thank God we got our van back last night, or we're getting it back tonight. And um, what was going to be a $500 fix turned out. My dad knew somebody that could fix it for like half the cost. And I just thank God because I was like, $500 is a lot to us. Yeah. And um, somebody from his work said, oh, I'll fix it. And he'll do, I'll do it for like two seventy. dollars So. I mean, that's Amen. A lot cheaper as well. Amen. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. And Anybody else tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me read this email that somebody gave to me. I don't know who it was. Slid it under the door. I always get emails under the doors. They slide them under there. Praise the Lord. It wouldn't have been you, Marie, would it? <laughs> Can't lie, can you, Marie? <laughs> A recall notice is really good, though. Recall notice. <clears throat> this is totally amazing. Be sure to read it. Talk about clever and to the point. Never heard it put quite like this before, recall notice. The maker of all human beings, God, is recalling all units manufactured regardless of make, year, make or year due to a serious defect in the primary and central component of the heart. This is due to a malfunction in the original prototype unit code named Adam and Eve resulting in the reproduction of the same defect in the subsequent unit. This defect has been identified as subse subsequential internal non-morality, more commonly known as S-I-N, sin. It is primarily expressed. Some of the symptoms include loss of direction, uh, foul vocal emissions, amnesia or of origin, lack of peace and joy, selfish or violent behavior, depression or confusion, uh, fearfulness, idolatry, rebellion. The manufacturer, who is neither liable nor at fault for this defect, is providing factory authorized repair and service free of charge to correct this defect. The repair technician, Jesus, has most generously offered to bear the entire burden of the staggering cost of these repairs. There's no additional uh, fee required. The number to call for repair in all areas is P R A Y E R, prayer. Once connected, please upload your burden of sin through the repentance procedure. Next, download atonement from the repair technician, Jesus, into, into, into the heart component. No matter how big or small the sin defect is, Jesus will replace it with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Please see the operating manual, the B-I-B-L-E, best instructions before leaving earth for further details on the use of these fixes. Warning. Continuing to operate the being, uh, human being unit without cor uh, correction voids any manufacturer's warranties exposing the unit to danger and problems too numerous to list and will result in the human, be uh, human unit being permanently impounded for free emergency service. Call on Jesus. Danger. The human being unit uh, not responsible to this recall action will have to be scrapped in the furnace. The sin defect will not be permitted to enter in heaven so as to prevent contamination of that facility. Thank you for your attention. God, P.S., please assist where possible by no notifying others of this important recall notice, and you may contact the Father anytime by Nemail, K-N-E-E, -E, mail, because he lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good, uh, good. Uh, Email, praise the Lord forevermore. How true that is. You know what? I could preach on that tonight if I, if I wanted to, but uh, I don't want to. <laughs> so bless the Lord. I want to get through the third chapter of Peter tonight. That's why I kind of cut things just a little bit short. We want to conclude with 
uh, the third chapter of Peter, if you would please, our second Peter, flip over there if you have your Bibles. I've noticed that all the epistles, whether it's uh, the, the Apostle Paul, whether it's Mark, Luke, John, uh, uh, whether it's Matthew, uh, whether it's uh, uh, whoever uh, has written the epistles, I've noticed one thing in everything that they write and they expound on, and that's holiness and purity before God. Every one of the writers expound on those, those things, uh, righteousness, purity, and holiness before the Lord. And, uh, of course, in, when you get over in the Revelations, you see that righteousness, purity, and holiness is a requirement, listen, to even get into heaven. Hallelujah. And the way that we obtain that is through the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God, hallelujah, for righteousness, purity, and holiness that comes through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, your Lord and your Savior. Praise God forevermore. No man can get into heaven without wedding garments. Are you hearing me? And that wedding garment is the righteousness of Christ. So therefore, listen, we cannot live a loose Christian life, hear me, and expect heaven to be our home. Some, and when I say loose Christian lives, and, and Peter talked about it, Paul talked about it in the book of Galatians, they was used grace for license to sin. I can do anything I, I want to do as a Christian, you know, and uh, still make heaven my home because grace covers everything. All my sin, past and present, grace covers it, so therefore, you know, I can do anything. And uh, this is what, what Peter ha- was dealt with. Uh, the Judaizers were coming in and saying uh, 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 that, that asking Paul and, and Peter as well, you know, is, is grace a license to sin? And he said, God forbid. We read that and we talked about that uh, uh, Sunday morning, I believe it is, in Romans uh, 6th chapter and 7th chapter. And uh, understand something, folk. We're to be dead to the sin nature. And somebody said, amen and amen. And without being dead to the sin nature, look at me, you're going to be prone to the sin nature. You're going to be doing what you said you won't be doing. And the only way that we overcome that, listen, is looking to the cross of Jesus Christ and allowing him to produce these things in our hearts and in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at second. Second Peter, if you would please, 3.10, and we'll conclude, uh, I, I promise you tonight, we'll conclude with the third chapter. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3.10, we left off on this verse last Wednesday night. I want us to read it together if we would. Hallelujah. Everybody there, just give you a few minutes to turn over to Second Peter 3.10. All right, let's read it together. But the day of the Lord will come. Now let's stop right there. Let's read it one more time. But the day of the Lord will come. Turn to your neighbor and say, that day's going to (laughs) come. You know what? What a positive statement. You see, Peter's Peter's speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. This is no private interpretation. Are you hearing me? It's not Peter's interpretation. Listen, uh, men of God was moved upon by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures. So Peter said, listen, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that day of the, or the day of the Lord will come, and it's going to come, no matter what the scoffers. We talked about the scoffers in the last day, saying that where is his coming? They've been saying that ever since the fathers fell asleep. We haven't seen it yet. Well, we see it in this day and age, the very same thing. Where is his coming? Where is this rapture of the church that, that the church is talking about? Where is it? But we found out also that, listen, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. God is a very patient God. And I ask this question, aren't you thankful he was patient with you and waited till you got in that he didn't come? And somebody said, praise God, hallelujah. I'm thankful for that child of God because one day, listen, hallelujah, time will be no more. Stop and think of this. One day the trump of God is going to sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. We which are alive are going to remain, to, get, uh, to remain together to meet the Lord in the air. And there we will be forever and ever and ever. That day is going to happen. Hallelujah. But he said, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The day of the Lord refers to the events that begin with Christ's return to catch the church away, which is called the rapture, and it culminates with the destruction of the present heaven and earth and the creation of the new heaven and a new earth. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a new heaven, and I'm looking for a new earth. Bless the Lord. Now understand something. We're going to be in heaven at the time that that takes place. But God's already preparing a place for us. Can you, can you just stop and think of this a second? He says, I go and prepare a place for you. He's preparing a place for you and for me that where he is, there we might be also. One day we're going to be in that heavenly city, New Jerusalem. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. That heavenly city, that New Jerusalem, praise God, where there's no, listen, no sin, no unrighteousness, no sickness, no death, no more tears. Come on, somebody shout. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is in the midst of her. Hallelujah. The Lord is in the midst of her. And stop and think of this a second, child of God. You see, we can't totally comprehend uh, everything in this physical body because we're limited in our thinking. But then our thinking will be unlimited. Think of this. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When I step into the portholes of glory in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Second Peter 3.11 Read it with me. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what things? The earth, the heavens. All these are going to be dissolved. They're going to burn up. Look at me. Your house is going to burn up. Your cars are going to burn up. Everything's going to burn up. The Lord said that. Stop and think of this a second. They're going to dissolve. Hallelujah. Read on. What manner of persons ought you be in all holy conversation, everybody say lifestyle, and godliness. Peter goes back to our lifestyle now. You see, Peter through the Holy Spirit's more concerned with the believer's spiritual condition than with the fervent melting away of the earth and the heaven. Because listen, if our spiritual condition is, is corrupt, hear me, heaven's not going to be our home. Understand something. And we'll go through the great tribulation. We'll go through, we'll, we'll experience hellfire as well. Now, you stop and think of this a second. Peter says, I'm more concerned with your spiritual condition that, that these, these seducers, these uh, 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 hucksters, and, and these uh, false prophets coming along, that they don't detour you off track to where you lose your relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be thankful, listen, child of God, hallelujah, for the truth that you know and that you stand in that truth and not be moved away from that truth. Peter over and over and over emphasizes, listen, be established in the word of God. Vitally, vitally important in this day and age because it's, it, it, listen, it was just as bad, if not worse, in that day as it was in this day. Hear me. Hallelujah. But understand something. Peter's saying over and over and over again. Paul's saying over and over again. Hallelujah. Be anchored and steadfast, unmovable. Hallelujah. Always, always abounding in the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never, never stop growing. Can I say that again? Never, never stop growing. Never develop a... a, a, a uh, what is it, um, uh, an unteachable spirit. We always can learn more and more and more and more. When you think you know it all, that's when you fall. Hallelujah. Who was it? Well, Jesus said, I believe it was, uh, if, if you think you stand, beware lest you fall. So we got to always have in mind Bless God that I've got, to be uh, I've got to be anchored. I've got to be steadfast, always abounding in the works of the Lord God Almighty. Uh, I believe it was Peter said, uh, desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. If we stop growing, look at me. You know what happens? You stagnate. 
You stagnate. You stay in one spot. You get complacent. And then you start compromising. Somebody say amen. (laughs) I hope you're listening to me. Praise God. You start compromising your convictions. Some of the things that you used to, uh, you know, that, that you, you would never even think about doing, now you're doing those things and taking enjoyment in doing some of those things. So when you, when you stop growing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you take a natural baby. If a natural baby stops feeding, you automatically, a red flag goes up in the moms and dads and says, something's wrong with that baby. My baby's not eating. So what do you do? You take them to the physician to find out what in the world, why aren't they eating? Because you know if they don't eat, listen, the danger is sooner or later they'll die if they don't get uh, 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 food into their stomach. So the vice versa, the very same thing spiritually, if we don't get spiritual food coming on the inside of us, hallelujah, and we're continue, and, and continuously growing in the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear me, child of God, you have no, no danger of falling. Praise the Lord. But when you stop growing in those things, that's when, listen, stagnation and compromise starts coming in and creeping into your life. Mark my words, any person that's not eaten on the Word of God, hear me, I'll guarantee you before long, there'll be no more joy in their life. Hear me, they'll stagnate and they'll start comp- compromise their convictions that they once used to have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. God, listen, is going to destroy this earth with fervent fire. He's going to destroy everything that's in, in, on the face of the earth. But understand something. It's not appointed for you and I to experience the judgment of the Lord. What a horrible thing it would be, listen, to know that our names once was written in the Lamb's book of life, but yet see a blotted out mark there where your name was. Now, Peter used this second coming, listen, uh, back then to, to cause the people to be aware to produce holiness in them. That's why he said, you know, I want you to be knowledgeable of what's going on, what's happening. Hallelujah. And when you talk about the rapture of the church, you talk about the second coming, you talk about the judgment of God to come. I don't know about you, but it ought to perk people's ears up and say, hey, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part, no part of of hellfire. I don't want to be no part of judgment itself. I want to be in the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So therefore, hallelujah. I allow the Holy Spirit to work righteousness, peace, joy, and purity in my hearts and in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as we study the Word of God, look at me, we begin to grow. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You begin to grow. You begin to become knowledgeable of the ways of God and not just the hand of God. Everybody say the ways of God. One more time the ways of God and not just the hand of God. I want to know his way. Are you hearing me? I want to know his ways because when you've got his ways, you've got his hand. Bless the Lord forevermore. So we want to know the ways of the Lord and the way that you know the ways of the Lord is, is through the Holy Scriptures. Hallelujah. From, a, from, a, from a, 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 a little child, thou hast known the scriptures which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Praise the Lord. Salvation there, when it, it doesn't only just mean being born again, but constant, continuous walk and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes back and splits the eastern skies. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So we ought to be growing more and more and more every day of our lives. Hallelujah. We, we used to sing that song, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over again. Hallelujah. We don't, fall in, we don't fall out of love with him. Hear me. Hallelujah. We're to fall in love with him over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lamb. 
Hallelujah. Our values and goals must be centered around God and the hope of a, of a new heaven and a new earth. Say this with me. We're in the world, but not of the world. One more time. We're in the world, but not of the world. Boy, we've got to, get, we've got to have an understanding of that, folks. We're here, but we're just pilgrims here. We're merely passing through in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Look at 1 Peter, if you would, please. Flip back to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2, 9. And listen to what Peter has to say here. Read with me. We'll finish up with the 11th verse, 9 through 11. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. What? That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at me. I'm a chosen person. You're a chosen person. Some would say, you know what? I chose Jesus today. No, you didn't choose, choose Jesus. Jesus chose you. See, we've got to have an understanding of that because I've talked to people and said, well, when I get on my deathbed, I'll accept Christ. No, you won't because it's when Christ chooses you. That's the day of salvation for you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not procrastination, hallelujah. It's the Lord choosing you. Bless God forevermore to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Look at me. Can I tell you something? You and I are priests and kings unto God, according to Revelation. Priests and kings. What did the priest, what did the high priest do in the old tabernacle? He offered up the sacrifices to the Lord. What do we offer up the sacrifices in the ending of this verse of Scripture? Our praises and thanksgivings unto the King of kings who had called us out of darkness and translated us into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, look at it, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Everybody say strangers and pilgrims. Hallelujah. We're strangers and pilgrims merely passing through this world. This world isn't my home. Hallelujah. I've got a heavenly home. Bless God, and that home is glory land in the name of the Lord. And we thank God for it in the name of Jesus because it's been bought, paid for. He's preparing that place for us. Bless the Lord forevermore, and I endeavor to make heaven my home in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let, don't let, don't let other people say, tell you this. As you live a holy, righteous life, and let me tell you something, in this end time dispensation, we'll be tested and tempted severely to compromise our convictions because of worldly Christians. But don't you ever dare give up, hear me, and give in one little bit, listen, hallelujah, and your compromise of the word of the living God, but you stand firm anchored and steadfast and unmovable. And when they say, well, everybody's doing it, why don't you do it? Hallelujah. Not everybody's going to do it. Not everybody's doing it. I'm not doing it because the Word of God says don't do it. We're to obey the Word of God and not people's opinion. Hear me. Hallelujah. Understand, Peter's trying to drill this into, these, into the, the, the brethren back then. Hallelujah, because compromise will truly try to come against you and try to get you to get off track and get you to, to compromise your convictions that you have in the word of the living God and uh, cast your confidence away, which hath great recompense of reward, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I ain't getting out of my people patch I'm staying in my pea patch and I'm going to battle until the king of kings and the lord of lords calls me home in the name of the lord Jesus come on give the lord a hand clap of praise tonight if you would please hallelujah pilgrims and strangers pilgrims and strangers look at me we're not a part of the world 
We're different from the world's crowd. They don't understand you. Hear me. They don't understand you. What in the world? How in the world can you enjoy life? I mean, you're not popping your strows. You're not doing this. You're not partying. How in the world do you, how you enjoy life? I enjoy life because I've got a relationship with Jesus. I've got the life giver in me. Amen. It's not Miller Light. Hear me. It's Jesus life. I said it's Jesus life. Come on, give me a hand clap of praise tonight. Bless the Lord forevermore. I've got the life giving flow inside of me. Praise God. God forevermore, hallelujah. Strangers and pilgrims passing through. We don't act like the world's crowd, hear me. We don't do some of the things that the world does. We don't do some of the things that the worldly Christian does. Hear me, hallelujah. And then when you show them the word of God, the worldly Christian, the word of God, they get upset at you. And they throw daggers at you and say, you're judging me. No, you're already judged. The Word of God judges you. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. They once used to live like that. But listen, they stopped growing. They didn't keep that teachable spirit. They stopped growing. When you stop growing, you become empty on the inside. You can become immature. Hear me. Hallelujah. You know, you can expect immaturity in babies. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. In maturity, Amber had a thing on her Facebook about little Kinley throwing a fit at, at, at her age. You know, can kids throw fits at that age and, and uh, you know, not get in their ways? And can I tell you something? You get baby Christians that have, some of them have been 10, 15, 20, 30 years old in the Lord Jesus Christ that have never matured, throw fits. Immature, hear me, child of God, because they stagnated, they stopped growing in the things of God Almighty. Somewhere down along the line, listen, they throw aside the word of God. All they might, have, might, they might read a, a verse here or there and, and, and feel that their duty is done before God to, uh, to, to appease the conscience, so to speak. Hear me. But understand something. They're not doing anything but fooling themselves. Because in the end, it will speak for itself, folk. Hallelujah. Let us be well grounded and anchored in God's word. Let us keep a teachable spirit. Hallelujah. Let us not compromise our convictions. Not everybody's doing it. You're not doing it. Praise God. You're standing firm and anchored on God's word. Hallelujah. And you're not going to compromise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and amen. And the devil's pretty slick. Oh, man, come on. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, such and such, look how, look how holy they are, and they're doing it. So and so, they're, you know, they're, they're doing this and they're doing that, you know. You can do a little bit of stuff here, there, whatever. But can I tell you something? Hear me. If your heart is convicted, don't do it. I said don't do it. Hallelujah, because if the time you do it, look at me. You know what you do? You stifle the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You grieve the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Hallelujah. So listen, we're not, we're not, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to give up. We're not going to back up. Hear me? We're not going to give in or cave in. Not one little bit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. As the Lord keeps us, uh, 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 get, keeps us strong, keep us, keeps us anchored, and keeps us steadfast. You see, in him we live, move, and have our being. My life is totally in him that gives me the victory again and again. But see, what happens when we stop growing is that we step outside of Jesus and we get on our own. We get in the carnality instead of staying in Jesus, in Christ. Hallelujah. Now look at 2 Corinthians, if you would, please. 2 Corinthians 14 through 18. No, that ain't it, is it? Must be 1 Corinthians. No, I'm sorry, it's 2 Corinthians 6. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18.
Let's read it together. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Beel? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are what? The temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 17th verse read, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Hallelujah. He's not talking about isolation. Are you hearing me? We're not to be like monks and go up into some uh, high mountain or whatever, you know, and find ourselves in, in some big temple and we isolate ourselves away from people. No, no, no. You can't isolate yourself away from people. How are people going to know about Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. But we don't act like them. We don't do the things that they do. We once used to do the things that they did, but now we don't do the things that they do. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, we come out from among them. I remember back when we first got saved, uh, we used to do a lot of partying and, and, and bar hopping and different things, you know, from uh, bar to bar and uh, uh, country western dancing and music and, and all that goes with that. And we would bounce back and forth, back and forth. And, and after we would got saved, you know, we had uh, several uh, of our friends that used to be our friends you know, say, hey, you know, uh, let's let, let's uh, get down to Harold's tonight, Harold's Bar. You know, they got such and such a band down there. And I said, no, nah, I can't do that. I mean, no, you get tested all the time. And and soon as you as soon as you become a Christian, the test hits you right off the bat. the The, the devil comes along and starts uh, testing you, and God permits some of the some of these things. Hear me, and he tests you right off the bat, and and uh, uh, going to see how you operate and how you work. And if you truly got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll find out that, you know what, I just don't find no entertainment in those things anymore. I just don't have a desire for those things anymore. Hallelujah. You see, that, that way you're not stagnating a person to say, oh, you're a holy Joe or a holy roller or what have you, this, that, or the other. But you just say, I don't have a desire for those things no more. I've got something better than bar hopping. I've got something better, listen, than, than, uh, than uh, uh, jumping from JoJo's bar to Harold's bar to this bar to that bar. Hear me. I've got something better than that. I've got the life-giving flow living on the inside of me. I've got the contentment of life living in me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. But uh, we're, we, we've come out from among them and be separate. They notice that, man, there's something been, there's, there's been a change in you. Something has happened on the inside of you. They don't really understand it, but you can tell them that, hey, you know what? Jesus come into my heart and into my life, and therefore I have no desires to do this, that, or the other. My desire now is just to please him who called me out of darkness and translated me into his marvelous light. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Uh, when, I, when I worked a secular job and I started telling the boys at Fruhoff, uh, some of the guys that I worked with for years, of uh, my relationship that I had with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I thought they was my friends, but I found out they weren't my friends. When they found out that I, got, uh, that I had a relationship with Jesus, I guess I was shining too much light and it, it drove them away. <laughs> but uh, understand something. People might ridicule, they might make fun of you, but can I tell you something? In the end, it will speak for itself. What you've got is what they really desire. And somebody said, amen, but they're just not man enough or woman enough to hone up to the plate and say, man, I'm a sinner and I need the grace of God. I need help. I need Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Pride is, uh, our hell is filled with a lot of people that of uh, pride that says that, you know, I can do it myself, and you can't do it yourself. 
Hallelujah. It's, we've got to have help from God Almighty. And I've found the contentment of life. It's in our relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Where was I at here? Let's see. I think I jumped past it. Yeah, in, in uh, 1 John 2.15. 1 John 2.15. Listen to what it says. Let's read it together. Everybody there? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Read. If any man love the world, what? The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hallelujah. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hallelujah. We can tell real quick, listen, how much love we have for the Father is how much love we are, 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 how much in love we are with this world. And when we talk about this world, we're talking about the world system. Now understand something, the world system is an antichrist system. You, you know that, amen? It's an antichrist system. Hallelujah. As I said before, we're in it, but not of it. I've been delivered out of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And, and we just read that. Be ye separate and come out from among them. Praise the Lord. We're not to act like the world's crowd any longer. And it, you know it amuses me that the church is trying to act like the world. Listen to, to draw the world. And it just don't work that way. Somebody say amen. You can't use the world's methods to win people's people's. Uh, hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why is because it comes from the world and not the Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's why the worldly church has nothing to offer the sinner, because they're of the world. Amen? They have nothing to offer the sinner because they're a part of the world and the world system. Hallelujah. But those that put their trust and confidence, those that are separated, called out ones, hear me, Hallelujah. Believe the totality of the word of God that are walking by the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Those are the ones, hear me, those are the ones that stand true, pure, and blue before God Almighty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to be the lighthouse set on a hill that people would see our good works and glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if we're acting like the world, look at me, we're not letting no light shine at all. Amen? We're not letting no light shine at all. Praise the Lord. So we ought to be, there ought to be something peculiar about you. There ought to be something different about us. There ought to be something different about this church. Amen? Hallelujah. We don't have bingo games. Hear me? We don't have slot machines back there in the back. We don't have... We don't have an atmosphere that, that in here that looks like a bar scene. Hear me? And we don't have a, a cafe uh, and a lounge to where they have regular, regular drinking glasses that, uh, you know, that, that they drink out of, hear me, to make it look just like you're in a bar. Some would say, come on, Pastor Martin. Well, wait till John comes back, and he'll just show it on the board of what's going on in a lot of these churches and what's happening in a lot of these churches. Brother, I want to tell you something. When you come to a church like this, it's peculiar. You know why? Because it's stuck with the old ways. Hear me. It's stuck to the old path. And thank God for it. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. They'll say, hey, you're narrow-minded. And I've called that. I got called that up at the book, bookstore in, in Van Wert. And uh, said, so, you know, you guys are narrow-minded. You need to open up a little bit. All the churches are doing this. And that was that 40-day of purpose, whatever, you know. I said, not all the churches are doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not getting on that, uh, that roller coaster ride. Are you hearing me? All that is is a man's ingenuity or a man's program that's not going to release or set anybody free. Well, how many know some people don't like to hear the truth? And they get mad at you or what have you. But... 
you know, that, I, I've been called that right at, at a business, narrow-minded, and I don't care what they call me. I know one thing, narrow is the way that leads unto salvation, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many thereby go. Are you hearing me? Or go thereby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's keep our focal point. Listen on purity, holiness, and righteousness, which is produced by the Holy Spirit in us. Hallelujah. Allowing the Spirit to give us wisdom and revelation of the Word of God so that we might grow thereby, being established in the Word. Hallelujah. That listen. When, when they, they come up to you and say, everybody's doing it, you can say, no, this is what the Word says. The Word says, the Word says, the Word says. And the, some of them will say, you know, you need to can that Word a little bit. Just step that aside of that Word. Folk, I want to tell you something. We'll never step aside away from the Word of God because when you start stepping away from the Word of God, you're in trouble. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In John 2, 23 through 25, John 2, 23 through 25. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name. Now look at this. Many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and need not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. You see, he paid little attention to their praises because of the miracles that he did. Hear me. That's why they was praising him. Their faith was nothing but a shallow type of faith. That's that's that that seed sown in stony ground or what have you. All different types of seeds sown in different types of soils. Hallelujah. Their their faith was, was a shallow type of faith. And it was placed upon the signs and the wonders. And folk, listen. Our faith is not to be placed upon signs and wonders and people getting healed. Thank God for people getting healed and thank God for people getting uh, 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 miracles or what have you. Bless the Lord. But our faith is not in that. You see, that's what those people was. Their faith was in the miracles and not in the miracle worker. And Jesus said he would not commit himself unto them because he knew their heart. That's what's so awesome about God. Look at me. He knows me better than I know myself. He knows what's in my heart. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in, he's, he knows what's in every individual's heart here tonight. Bless the Lord. But he would not commit himself to these people because they was fickled people. Hear me. Understand, all they was doing was following him around for the fishes and loaves, following him around for the miracles, the signs and the wonders, but the Lord wanted them to seek after him to be their Lord and their Savior. But all they wanted to do is place their faith in the signs and the wonders. They believed on his name, but they didn't want to make him the Lord of their life. And Jesus would not commit himself unto them. Can I tell you something? Not everybody that comes around the front of the altar, even though they squall and bawl, gets saved. Are you hearing me? God knows the heart of the individual. Now, you want to think the best of every individual. Amen? You want to think the best of every of the individual. You want to think the best that they've got saved. But understand, only God knows the heart because if the heart isn't right, hear me, if they're up there for any other reason outside of, 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 of wanting a brand new life and a changed life, hear me, God will not commit himself to them. They might have an emotional experience around the altar. They might cry. They might squall. They might bawl. But if you're sincere and God commits himself to you, he'll come into your heart and into your life, and instantly you'll know there's a change on the inside of you. But those that God won't commit himself to, listen, they'll come up, squall, bawl, and then they'll leave and you won't see them for two or three weeks. Hear me. You know why? Because God's not committed himself to them. They've not committed to God, so therefore God hasn't committed to them. God will only commit to those that are committed to him. And God knows their heart more than I know their heart. He knows my heart better than I know my heart. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's what's so awesome about God. We can't hide anything from God. 
Hallelujah. You want, uh, you, want, you, you want me to blow your mind tonight? He knows every thought that you think. Stop and think of this. He knows every thought that you think. Boy, there's been some unpleasant thoughts run through my mind. And you know what pops into my mind? The Spirit of the Lord says, I know those thoughts. I know those thoughts. It's time to pack up bags and move out of that area. Because if you don't move out of that area, look at me, before long you're going to be grieving the Holy Spirit. Now thoughts come and they go. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Birds fly over our heads, but we can stop birds from making a nest in our head, on our hair. Amen? And I have a hard time making a nest on my head. But anyhow, understand something. They come and then they go. But boy, when they stop and they start lodging and they start taking up residency, before long, listen, the mind is the incubator and you start incubating the thought and the next thing you know, if you keep thinking on it, it drops into the heart and then it becomes full-fledged sin and the next thing you know, you're doing what you're thinking. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, listen, bad thoughts will come into you. They'll, they'll, they'll filter through. And you can't control those things. Hear me. Bless the Lord. But understand something. Don't let them lodge in you. That's something you can control. Praise God. It can come in this ear and out that ear. Amen. Bless the Lord. So understand here. Hear me. Bless God. Those thoughts, they might come. But understand Hallelujah, they got to go. Just let them float right on through in the name of the Lord. How in the world do you do that? Well, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, you think on the things that are pleasant, good, and pure in Jesus' name. I was out hunting the other morning, early in the morning, uh, just fellowshipping with the Lord up in a tree, just having a good time before daybreak ever, ever broke loose, fellowshipping with the Lord. And then... I'm sitting there, you know, and then all of a sudden some thoughts start running through my mind and they wasn't pleasant thoughts and they wasn't from the Lord. <laughs> and I, I caught myself dwelling on that. I, I mean, I just got done praising God and glorifying the Lord and just having a good time. And then all of a sudden these thoughts start coming through and the next thing, how many ever seen anybody talking to themselves? Have you ever done that? You know, when you start talking to yourself, that thing's starting to lodge in you. That's the time, listen, to cast down vain imaginations and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge and the wisdom of God, captivating every thought and bringing it into the obedience of Christ Jesus. That's when I start singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found. I was blind, but bless God I see. You see, you start singing songs, you start praising the Lord, and what that does, it drives that right out of you, right on through you, and your mind starts being placed on something other than that thought of bad or evil or whatever it is coming into you. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. The Holy Spirit will always counter, hear me, of what the enemy wants to try to put into you. Bless the Lord. And understand something. Bless God. If you have bad dreams at night, you're not held accountable for it. Don't be quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have bad dreams at night, don't, be, don't think you're held accountable for it. Don't let the devil bring condemnation on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Boy, there's been times I've, I, you know, I've been fighting with with, in the bars, I've been fighting with people, all different types of things. You know, man, you got, wake up the next morning, you feel like you've been in the ring with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Hear me. And, man, you feel bad. You go, man, oh, man, you know, I ain't to be doing that kind of stuff. But it's the devil hearing me. You understand me. The devil trying to come in and put condemnation on you and bringing up your old past. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You're not held accountable for those things. Why? Because you're not conscious of it. 
Hallelujah. You don't have that, 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 that control there. Are you hearing me, child of God? You're, you're out in la-la land. Bless the Lord. Praise God forevermore. So don't let the devil bring up your past and put condemnation on you. Hallelujah. Of, of, of maybe something that you've done uh, years ago and some of the things that you've done before. Listen, child of God, you're not held accountable for those things. Bless God forevermore. You just keep right on going and, and trucking for the Lord in Jesus' name. Just keep on pressing into the kingdom of God and give the devil a black eye in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. But the Lord wouldn't commit to these guys. And the reason why is because, listen, they, 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 wasn't, they wasn't submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. And as I said before, he knows our very thoughts. He knows our hearts. He knows our intents. He knows everything about us. Every little detail about us, God knows. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Christ wants our hearts anchored in his word and his word alone. Praise God. Not in signs, not in wonders, hallelujah, but anchored totally, completely in his word. Bless God. I get happy when I see people get healed. But you know what? I can't anchor my faith in that. I've got to anchor my faith in the one that does the healing. Oh, praise God. Do you hear what I'm saying? I've got to anchor my faith in that because the devil wants us to get out just like these people, what Peter was talking about, or I'm sorry, what, what Jesus said, uh, he wasn't committed to them because their heart wasn't where it was supposed to be. Praise the Lord. So our heart is, in the, is, is to love the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God, and not in what he does, but who he is. And somebody said, amen. To me, he is my lover and my savior and my Lord. And everybody said, praise God. But we've got to be anchored in his word. Now look at uh, uh, Psalms 112, if you would, please. Psalms 112, 1 through 10. Listen to what it says. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his, what? Commands, or his word. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commands. What it, what's the promises? His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in the, his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Now, when you talk about wealth and riches there, he's not necessarily talking about, you know, dollars and cents. Because a lot of times you say wealth and riches, uh, you know, the first thing that pops into your mind is a dollar sign. But can I tell you something? If you've got a healthy marriage, that's wealth and riches. And somebody said, amen, amen. shall be in his house. Bless God. Hallelujah. And the righteous endureth forever. Unto the upright there rises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Now understand all these blessings hinge upon the man that delighteth greatly in the commands of God and fear God. Amen? It all hinges on the first verse. Praise God. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees the desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn uh, shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish hallelujah to the lamb but i don't know about you but listen i want to be well anchored in verse in the word of the living god because these promises belong unto me and they belong unto you hallelujah to the lamb i have a reverential fear of the lord jesus christ and when we lose that reverential fear we're in trouble amen i said we're in trouble now let's go back to second peter bless god i promised you i was going to end up with the third chapter here, and we're going to do that. 
Look at the 12th verse, if you would, please. Read, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a, look for a, look for a new heaven and a new earth. Say it with me. A new heaven and a new earth. I don't know about you. I've got a blessed hope beyond the grave. The sinner don't have that. You have that. You know. You've got inside information what's going to happen in the future. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein what? Dwelleth righteousness, which tells me something. Sin will not be there. The sinner will not be there. Only the righteous will be there. Wherefore, beloved, look what it says, 14th verse. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. I like that word diligent. That you may be found of him in what? Peace without and Boy, that, dis- that, that, that pretty well wipes out a lot of the church. That you might be found where? In Him. The only way, listen, you're going to be righteous, pure, and holy is be in Him. Hallelujah. Be found of Him in peace without spot and blameless. 15th verse, an account that the long-suffering our Lord of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. In other words, they twist the word, hear me. And they take the word out of context, listen, and, and literally uh, devour the, the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many know where to keep the scripture in context? You can't just pull one scripture out and tie another scripture here and another scripture there to make it fit your doctrine. But you keep it in context in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Something else I caught here too. Is, is Peter put a put premium upon the Apostle Paul's, listen, as being a, a uh, apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? Hallelujah. Our beloved Paul, he said. Hallelujah. His, and his epistles. Can I tell you something? There's a teaching going on even now as I'm speaking that nullify the epistles of the Apostle Paul, just like they did back then. And saying Paul wasn't really a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And can I tell you something? They want to they destroy the, the apostleship of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And the reason why? Listen, because Paul preached on the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. With, with emphasis behind it. Listen, it was his message. Praise God. It was given unto him as a revelation given unto him. And Peter said, man, you know, some of the teachings that Paul taught, they was hard to understand because of the revelations that Paul had from the Lord Jesus Christ. But you and I have it, listen, written right before us and before our very eyes as Paul wrote, what, two-thirds of the New Testament in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So you know what? There's all types, all types of bogus teachings going on today. I, I, I turned the television on today, uh, uh, and or yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Flipped it on. Uh, my wife was sitting there, flipped it on, and programmed. This one man was on here, and I said, "I can tell you what, just what that guy's going to teach." And I just flipped it on there. I'll tell you what this guy's going to teach, and and she said, "What?" And I said, "Money." And sure enough, that's what he taught on money. I flipped it to another channel. I said, "I tell you what, this guy's going to te- what he's going to teach." He's going to teach on the prayer shawl, and he's going to teach on the Jewish, uh, the two Jewish uh, uh, observances and, and uh, feast days and 
blessings in them, keeping the feast days or what have you. He's going to teach on those things and bring the New Testament church back into the Old Testament. Listen to observe these, time, these days. Folk, those are all symbols of the Christ to come, every bit of it. Why do I want to go back when I've got the real thing? Sometimes you could just slap these people. But you know what? You know what he is selling? My prayer shawls. Now, now, you guys need to get this prayer shawl. And I've got spatials on them, you know. You can buy one Christmas just around the corner. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, you, you chuckle on the inside, but yet you hurt on the inside because people are being duped by that. And that's why Peter said, man, we got to know the scriptures over and over and over again so that you don't get carried away in this this." this uh, junk that is being uh, pushed along and called Christianity, which it is nothing to do with Christianity. It all has to do with money, making money. And, and uh, you know, it's just when you stop and you think, you know, if I'm a sinner and I turn on Christian TV, how in the world am I ever going to get saved? Because this preacher's selling vitamins. And I'm serious. This preacher's selling vitamins. This preacher's pre- selling prayer shawls. This preacher's talking about sowing your $1,000 seed. Hear me, getting your mortgage paid off. How do you get saved in all of that? Stop and think of this. Man, let's get back to the basics of the gospel, just preaching Jesus and Him crucified. I'm a sinner, and I need the grace and the mercy of God to get saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord forevermore. You see, we've lost that concept of the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go ye into all the world and sell your parachols. It don't say nothing like that. You know what Jesus would do today? Just like he did back then when he went to the temple. You know what he did? He overthrew the money changers. These people are making big bucks. Listen, all the people coming in there. Hallelujah. Listen, but some of them didn't have their sacrifice to give. Hear me. And they would change their money, and, and they would, they would, the priest would look at, at the sacrifice that maybe they did bring and say, ah, 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 ah it's got a scab on it. You know, you're going to have to go over here and, and buy one of these that we've got corralled over here, and then you pay three times the price on it. Hear me. And, and Jesus come in see and all this stuff going on and he overthrew the money changers and said man you've made my father's house a a den of thieves when it should be a house of prayer in the name of Jesus and man you 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 could just see the holy anger of the Lord coming up and folk I I believe listen that 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 soon and very soon a lot of these things are going to go down down the tubes because God's going to put a stop on it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I wouldn't want to sit in some of these people's shoes. I wouldn't want to be one of those, listen, hear me, that's selling vitamins and doing this, that, and the other and wasting good time, good money, listen, to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. People are giving money into the kingdom and and supporting their ministry and the gospel isn't even being presented. I want my, listen, if I'm going to support something, I want to make sure that the gospel is being presented and souls are being harvested into the kingdom of God Almighty in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. But Peter, over and over here in this third chapter, is saying you've got to be anchored. You've got to be grounded because there's going to be scoffers. There's going to be mockers. There's going to be false teachers. There's going to be false prophets. Give all different types of things. But you know what I, what I declared to you. You knew ahead of time that these things are going to happen. We know ahead of time that these things are going to happen. Why? Because the Scripture tells us. Bless the Lord forevermore. So they don't take us by surprise. Hallelujah. So uh, where am I at here? The 16th verse. As also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also the other Scriptures unto their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before... Beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own 
steadfastness. Now understand, he's talking to the church here. He's saying, beware lest you fall from your own steadfastness, hear me, and get caught up in some of this junk. We're to examine ourselves. Paul said, examine yourself and see and prove if you're in the faith. You know what? We need a checkup all the time. A lot of times we go to the doctors to get uh, exams and, and see how healthy we are. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to have an examination and see how healthy we are spiritually by, listen, lining our life up with the Word of God. You see, the Word of God is our plumb line in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But he says, uh, you therefore, beloved, seeing that you... Seeing you know these things before, lest you also being led away with the air of wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but what? Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just finished up the third chapter. But he says, Grow. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ, lest we fall prey and slip into some of this bogus teaching as well. That's why we need to know the Word. Amen? We need to be well anchored, grounded in the Word of God that we know what truth is. Bless the Lord. And we contend for the faith in Jesus' name. Stand your feet. Any questions? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're, we're 10 minutes early. 25 after 8. Any questions? No questions tonight? I Bless the... Though, go ahead. You say you have your quiet time, you know, and pray the Lord, and then those thoughts creep in your mind. Is it amazing? It's just not just thoughts. It's thoughts of things that you're dealing with that are... that you know that, you know, you're having struggles. Sure. With. You know, either people yep. have done you wrong and, you're, and, the, and the devil comes in and says, well, you can do this and this and this to get even. Or, I mean, just... It, it, All different types of things conjured up in your mind what, that, you, that you, can, you, you, can, you can promote and do that's, right. to get even. Different, All different types of things, you know. And it not necessarily has to be just what, what you're talking about there, but it can be about anything, you know, that, that, that the devil, one time you're praising the Lord and then all of a sudden, bang, you know, out of nowhere, here... Here comes that thought, you know, and and to shake that thought off, a lot of times, it it, it wants to stick there. It'll shake off, and then all of a sudden, it'll come back. And you shake it off, and then all of a sudden, it'll come back again. Anybody have noticed that before? Hallelujah. Look at me. Welcome to the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Every one of us go through those things. So don't think you, you're strange. Are you hearing me? Every one of us go through those very same things. Praise the Lord forevermore. But look at me. We're on the cutting edge. We're on the winning side. Otherwise, the devil wouldn't be doing those and trying to throw those thoughts in your heart and in your minds in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jeremy, close us in prayer, would you, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word this evening, God. And we just ask uh, through the remainder of our time here, God, we ask that uh, you help us be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in your work. We just ask that as the enemy puts thoughts our way, we, we just help us through, through your spirit to captivate those thoughts and uh, cast them under foot. We just ask that uh, each 